Most of us have been confined in our homes because of the pandemic. Can't go out and play your favorite sports, can't go biking, hiking, or even jog in the morning. And it looks like this situation will be here for a while. So might as well engage yourselves with some physical activities as we welcome another school year. Hi, my name is Coach Joseph Pagalayan, a fitness and sports performance coach, and welcome to our subject, Health Optimizing Physical Education. Health is wealth. This may sound cliche, but it is definitely true, especially in our current situation. That's why in today's episode, we will focus on how to stay fit and healthy. Today, you will learn and understand the different components of health-related fitness and how to assess them. Also, you will know the different factors affecting our physical activities as well as our diet. In this lesson, you will perform and engage in some physical activities. Before we begin our lesson, let me ask a few questions answerable with yes or no. Question number one, are you free from illness? Number two, do you engage in physical activities or sports? Number three, after doing physical activities or sports, do you have extra energy to do more activities? If you answered yes to all the questions, it means you're closer to being physically fit. But how do we know that for sure? Physical fitness is a combination of health fitness and body fitness. Health fitness refers to our body's ability to fight diseases off, while body fitness refers to the ability to do strenuous physical or sports activities without getting tired easily. Let's go further by doing physical activity trek and by reviewing what you learn from your junior high school PE class. Get your pen and notebook and let us answer this trek to physical fitness. Imagine that you're on a trek. On every footprint that you will leave, it corresponds to a health-related or skill-related fitness component. The left steps indicate health-related fitness, while the right steps indicate skill-related fitness. Some prints are already provided for you to help you in your journey. Choose your answers from the box. We will give you 30 seconds to answer. Timer starts in three, two, one. Time's up. Now let's check your answers. Let's check it with left and right steps. Let us start with the left step, which can come in any order. Muscular strength, muscular endurance, and cardiovascular endurance. This time, let's have those in the right steps in any order. Agility, coordination, power, and reaction time. Great, you still remember what you learned from your junior high school. This time, let's know more about physical fitness, focusing on health-related fitness. Let us take a closer look first at the components of health-related fitness, which are number one, body composition, the combination of all tissues that make up the body, like fluids, bones, and muscles. Number two, cardiovascular endurance. It's the ability of the heart and the other organs to work efficiently and supply oxygen in the body. Number three, flexibility. The ability to use your joints fully through a wide range of motion. Number four, muscular endurance, which is the ability to use muscles for a long period of time without tiring. And number five, muscular strength, which is the ability of the muscles to lift heavy weights and exert force at a time. These related components are primarily associated with disease prevention and functional health. Participating in our regular health-related fitness activities helps you control your weight, prevents diseases, and illness. 
improves your mood, boosts energy, and promotes better sleep. Aside from these health-related components, we also have skill-related fitness components, which are agility, balance, coordination, power, reaction time, and speed. These components allow us to do various physical activities. Now that you know the different components of physical fitness, let us now get to know ways on how to assess and keep ourselves fit and healthy. The first one is getting your body mass index or BMI. For this, you will need the following, a weighing scale, a tape measure, and basic math skills. Measure weight in kilograms, your height in meters, and compute for your BMI using this formula. BMI equals weight in kilograms over height in meters squared. Second is a zipper test. Its purpose is to test the flexibility of the shoulder girdle. For this, stand straight, raise your right arm, bend your elbow, and reach back as far as possible. To test the right shoulder, extend your left arm down and behind your back, bend your elbow up across your back, and try to reach your fingers over those of your right hand as if to pull a zipper or scratch between the shoulder blades. To test the left shoulder, repeat procedures A and B with the left hand over the shoulder. Have your siblings or anyone with you to observe whether the finger touched or overlapped each other. If not, measure the gap between the middle fingers of both hands. Record the distance in centimeters. Use the guide as scoring. To test your cardiovascular endurance, we will have the three minute test. You will need a step a height of about 12 inches, or you may use a step of your stairs. A stopwatch, drum, clapper, clicker, metronome with a speaker or any similar device. At the start of the timer, follow this easy instructional video. Immediately after three minutes, stand and locate your pulse, and in five seconds, or at the signal, start to get the heart rate. Don't talk while taking the pulse rate. Count the pulse beat for 10 seconds and multiply it by six. Next is push-ups. Do it to measure the strength of your upper extremities. This is how the men will do it. Perform as many repetitions as possible in one minute. Have a family member take the time for you. To measure explosiveness and strength of your legs, we'll have the standing long jump and you're going to need these. Tape measure, a meter stick, or any measuring device, and follow this video instruction. Stand behind the takeoff line with feet parallel to each other. The tips of the shoes should not go beyond the line. Bend knees and swing arms backward. Then swing the arms forward as you jump, landing on both feet. Try to jump as far as you can. Do not control the momentum of the jump or continuously move forward. You must land on both feet. Perform the test twice in succession. Have someone to get your score, A. After the jump, spot the mark where the back of the heel or either feet of the tester has landed nearest to the takeoff line. And B, record the distance of the two trials and use this table for scoring. Next is the hexagon test to measure agility. Use a masking tape to make a hexagon on the floor following this dimension and follow this video on how to execute it. Stand with both feet together inside the hexagon facing the marked side. At the signal of go, using the ball of the feet and with the arms bent in front, jump clockwise over the line, then back over the same line inside the hexagon. Continue the pattern with all the sides of the hexagon. Rest for one minute, then repeat the test counterclockwise. For the partner, A, start the time at the signal of go and stop once the performer reached the side before he or she started. Record the time of each revolution and use this table for scoring. Now let us measure your time to respond to a stimulus with a stick drop test. For this, you will need a 12-inch ruler, a table, 
and a chair. Follow this video on how to execute it properly. For the tester, sit on a chair next to a table so that the elbow and the lower arm rests on the table comfortably. Place the heel of the hand on the table so that the fingers and the thumb extend beyond. The fingers and the thumb should at least be one inch apart. Now catch the ruler or a stick with a thumb and an index finger without lifting the elbow from the table as the partner drops the stick or the ruler. Hold the stick or the ruler while the partner reads the measurement. Do this thrice. For the partner, hold the ruler or stick at the top, allowing it to dangle between the thumb and fingers of the performer. Hold the ruler or stick so that the 12-inch mark is even between the thumb and the index finger. No part of the hand of the performer should touch the ruler or stick. Drop the ruler or stick without warning and let the tester catch it with his or her thumb and index finger. Record the score on the upper part of the thumb. Use this table for scoring. For your hand and eye coordination, we will do juggling. You will need sipa or a washer weighing four grams with a five inch straw or 20 pieces of bundled rubber bands or any similar local materials weighing four grams. See this video on how to execute the test. Hit the sipa or rubber bands or any similar local material alternately with the right and left palm upwards. The height of the material being tossed should be at least above the head. For the partner, count how many times the performer has hit the material with the right and left hand. Stop the test if the material drops or after two minutes has expired. There shall be three trials. For the scoring, record the highest number of hits the performer has done using this table. And lastly, the stork balance stand test. This is to assess the ability to maintain equilibrium or balance. You will need a stopwatch and make sure that you do this on a flat, non-slip surface. For the tester, remove your shoes and place your hands on the hips. Position the right foot on the side of the knee of the left foot. Raise the heel to balance on the ball of the foot. Do the same procedure with the opposite foot. For the partner, start the time as the heel of the performer is raised off the floor. Stop the time if any of the following occurs. The hand or hands come off the hips. The supporting foot swivels or moves or hops in any direction. Or the non-supporting foot loses contact with the knee. Or the heel of the supporting foot touches the floor. There shall be three trials. For the scoring, record the time for both feet to the nearest second and divide the score by two to get the average percentage score. You may use this table. There you have it. Now you know your strengths and weaknesses then. You may start improving them. One of the best ways to stay fit and healthy is through physical activity because it requires the use of skeletal muscles that utilizes energy. Did you know that physical activity is classified into four domains, namely occupational, domestic, transportation, and leisure time? Occupational, these are the activities you do at your workplace. Imagine that you are already at your immersion, lifting computers, filing documents, or walking from one office to the other. These are all examples of occupational activities. Domestic, these are the activities you do at home, washing clothes and dishes, gardening, carpentry or repairing furniture, baking home-cooked cookies, or cleaning the house. Transportation. These are the activities that involve traveling, riding a jeepney, tricycle, motorcycle, or bicycle. Leisure time. These are activities you do during recreational activities like playing, swimming, hiking, or craft making. Aside from the physical activity, we can also have exercises which, according to Buckworth and Dishman, are planned, structured, and repetitive body movements that someone engages in for the purpose of improving or maintaining physical fitness or health. Here are the activities that would make you physically fit. Aerobic, muscle strengthening, and bone strengthening activities. Aerobic activities are also called endurance activities. 
which people move their large muscles in a rhythmic manner for sustained periods. Muscle strengthening is a kind of activity that includes resistance training and lifting weights, causing our muscles to work or hold against an applied force or weight. Bone strengthening, sometimes called weight bearing or weight loading activity, produces a force on the bones that promotes bone growth and strength. My question to you is, do we get to exercise these days? Because of the current situation, most of us are at home and not too many of us have space to do physical activities or play. Other reasons or barriers to physical activity are the lack of time, no social support, lack of energy, lack of motivation, fear of injury, lack of skill, high costs, lack of facilities, and weather conditions. Being physically fit also includes eating right, so let's talk about food and our eating habits. Eating habits refers to why and how people eat, which foods we eat, and with whom they eat with, as well as the ways people obtain, store, use, and discard food. There are also factors that influence our eating habits. Influences on food choices are individual preferences, cultural, social, religious, economic, environmental, and political influences. How can we improve our eating habits? To improve our eating habits, it will require us to reflect, replace, and reinforce. Reflect on all of our specific eating habits, both bad and good, and your common triggers for unhealthy eating. Replace your unhealthy eating habits with healthier ones. Reinforce your new healthier eating habits. And now let us check on whether you learned about your topic today. In 30 seconds, get a piece of paper and a pen and answer our questions. Your time starts now. I hope you have your materials now. Let's begin. Question number one for 10 seconds. This is the combination of health, fitness, and body fitness. Time starts now. Time's up. The correct answer is physical fitness. Question number two for 20 seconds. Name the five different components of health-related fitness. Time starts now. Time's up. The correct answer in any order are body composition, cardiovascular endurance, flexibility, muscle endurance, and muscular strength. For our final question, name the three ways of improving your eating habits. The 20 seconds starts now. Time's up. The correct answers in any order are reflect, replace, and reinforce. I hope you got all the answers right. Physical activity can be more enjoyable and beneficial for your health. You can make your physical activities more exciting and challenging. For moderate, you can add some additional activities or add more minutes to convert them into vigorous activity. This will allow you to keep your body fit while staying at home. Always remember, a healthy body makes a healthy mind. Join us as we engage in different physical activities, not only engaging activities that await you, but also additional learnings towards achieving an active and healthy lifestyle. This is Coach Joseph Pagalayan, your hope teacher. Goodbye.